Welcome back to your weekly dose of motivation, brought to you by the Motivating Force Podcast. You're listening to Josue, an aspiring Marine Corps officer who is finishing up ROTC and working towards his bachelor's in criminal justice. And myself, Justin, a motivational speaker who's always excited to share our new ideas and topics with you. We are both highly motivated individuals who love to question everything and share some rather unique viewpoints with all of our listeners. This week, we're going to emphasize why you should simply just not care about something and what you should be shifting your focus towards instead of being offended by every little thing. This goes for all sides of the political, economical, and societal arguments. No biases allowed in today's podcast. With that being said, let's get this fire lit and get motivated. Okay, Oswe, jumping right into it this week, hitting a little bit of a spicier topic. We'll be talking about being offended. We feel like that this is an important conversation to have just because when you're trying to create a structured life for yourself, if you are easily offended by things, you're going to have a really hard time dealing with reality. It's going to be very off-putting to you, and there are many issues that we're going to discuss today about why that can actually prevent you from, you know, going out there and living your best life. Right. So I do want to start this off by uh, talking about what I'm offended about. Tell me, Justin, what are you offended by? I'm offended that I feel that I have to be entitled to be offended. That's a great word you used, my friend. Because when you think of people being offended, you think of people that are entitled. You think everybody thinks that they're entitled to having their voice heard that their voice needs to be heard by everyone, everywhere. And that leads to people just assuming different things and causing arguments over things that they don't have knowledge on. And it's due to social media. It's led to social justice warriors fighting for something that they briefly know, you know, because they just want to have their voice heard. They're just going to be like, yeah, let me jump on that topic and start telling you you should feel this way about something. Or... Or just focusing on the trends that work for them and makes them feel comfortable or heard. Yeah, that's an issue we can see with social justice warriors, right? That whole verbiage in that sense anyways. Always trying to pick the the newest, trendiest thing to be hurt over, right? Yeah. And a lot of that we can give credit to the herd mentality we have in society. So we always want to be the cool kid. We always want to fit in. If somebody says, hey, we no longer like, I don't know, give me something, right? The color blue. Yeah. We no longer like the color blue. If you wear blue, well. You're bringing shame to your family. (laughs) You know, (laughs) something like that. And uh, you get enough people hopping on that. And then you go around and you ask, you know, anybody on a college campus for say, right? Hey, man, what do you think about the color blue? And they're just like, no, man, no, we don't, we don't do that no more. And you ask them why. Well, not j- just because we don't do that no more. Yeah. Because everybody else doesn't do it. Yeah. So you just want to be cool. You want to fit in. You know, that's the whole thing with being woke, right? That's the entire it's point of being woke. Just to fit in with what the new normal is in society. Yeah. And with that, it brings about extremes. And that's where it has this whole polarizing situation that we see in our world right now. Yeah. Everybody's on their own personal journey, right? So you don't know where anybody else is on their their journey of growth as a person. And when you get this herd mentality and you just start following what what the mainstream thing is all the time, you know, that entitlement leads to you making a lot of assumptions. One of those things is you're going to just assume that because the new thing is nobody likes the color blue. You see somebody wearing a blue shirt, you're going to be offended by it. You're going to have a problem with it. And that person could have no idea that, you know, blue is just not the color right now. Yeah, you're going to call them out. They're going to feel like less of a person because of the extremes that they're going to tell you, hey, blue is not in. Blue's super unwoke asleep, I guess is the term. (laughs) What do they say? (laughs) Um, But it just brings down that person instead of just being like positive about something like just tell them it's a nice shirt (laughs) why is the color blue why does that have like deep rooted value to you to call him out on it but that's the entire issue is that you don't have strong enough values within yourself 
to tell you what you want to believe instead of what everybody else is telling you to believe. So you're going to go out of your way to make somebody else feel like crap instead of just being positive about the situation. And because you lack those values, you don't have the knowledge to back up what you're even complaining about to begin with. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty of it, right? When we have these safe spaces, things like that going on right now. If you're offended by something, somebody hits that trigger point, instead of having a logical argument about it, all you have to do is be the loudest person in the room, and then everybody's just going to try to cater to you for one of two reasons. One being you're either going to seem really important. Yeah, the are going to keep egging you on, yeah. getting your point heard. Or the second reason is going to be they just kind of want you to shut up and go away. So when you bring out that extreme emotion of being offended and being triggered by something of that nature, you don't need to have any logical facts to really support that. Because when you're just being emotional enough about it, you're going to draw enough attention to yourself. Yeah, and I like what you said about if you're having that that lack of a logical conversation, because that's where you actually learn something. And most of the time, you can be wrong. So the fear of being called out and being like told that you were wrong about something and you thought you were right, the entitlement steps in and you just don't want to hear that to begin with. So I think that's where the root of this is also in that lack of a logical conversation. Oh yeah, that's the full circle on what this whole point is about with entitlement. It's super destructive in that sense where you're going to just be stifling your growth because if you can't come to terms with being wrong about something, then that means that you're a perfect person and there's no room for improvement, right? Yeah. We how... know, obviously, that's not the case. Yeah. You know, how many people are perfect in the world? Right now, I can name you zero, right? Well, I'm not counted in that. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Not today. That's all right. Yeah. But going to the other side of that entitlement where maybe you don't think you're a perfect person, right? And you know you have some of these issues going on or some of these traumas and experiences because we all have them, but it's easier for you to tell people how to fix their lives than it is for you to fix your own. Yeah, you project your insecurities and your flaws, and you want to try to seem perfect by telling other people that you know the way. But what you should be really focusing on is living your own life. Find and analyze your trigger points and just sit back and reflect on if those have a real value on why you're actually upset about it to begin with. Because it could be an effect of that herd mentality that you just hear your friends and family complaining about this nonstop, that you just grab onto that and you're like, yeah, this bothers me all the time. But one, it could never even happen to you. Or two, you just don't have the knowledge of it. So it's like, why does it really offend you if it has nothing to do with you? So in other words, that's the solution that we can say for entitlement and to have the lack thereof. It's basically to just take yourself out of the situation, take that step back. Yeah, taking a step back is really important on being able to analyze yourself with any topic, anything going on in your life. And I contribute a lot of that knowledge that we have here on the show comes from the studying and practicing of Stoicism, which real briefly is in very old Greek philosophy, a way of life that was all about removing yourself from situations and essentially just realizing that hey guess what one day you're gonna die yeah and when you can focus on that it makes a lot of things either become reality or a lot of things kind of just go away and lets you focus on the important things in life i feel like that's something we lack a lot today for like you and me uh, at our age group luckily we were born in a time where Kids didn't just go to jail for getting into fights, right? Yeah. Like you could get into a neighborhood fight and go home and be bleeding and bruised up and just cry about it to your mama. Yeah, and that was just another Friday. Yeah, you know. And and as long as you weren't the kid that was constantly losing, there wasn't really a a big problem, right? (laughs) But that's the reality is, you know, these kids, man, you can't, as as a parent, you can't hit your child. Not anymore. No. Your your friends, right? Because it's true, even... Growing up, my friends were the ones that I would get into fist fights with. And of course, you always had some kids that you didn't like that, you know, you just get into a fight with just because. But I think there was a change there where you could kind of develop that entitlement and that godlike mentality because these kids today, growing up, are less susceptible to just experiencing a, a physical punishment for things, right? There's no 
pain or anything related to doing something bad something bad yeah so you know they get these really petty points to be offended by and it's really hard for like the older crowd to understand and then for people in more of that middle ground like late 20s 30s they can kind of get it right because we kind of grew up with that it was still like you still got into fist fights but it was like, oh, you know maybe you probably shouldn't be doing that and then now we're full on like you're gonna go to jail if you touch somebody and well yeah i think that whole hitting situation comes from our generation like we were the ones that were beat as kids and i think what i'm getting from what you're saying is like um like parents that like hit their kids for doing something wrong right yeah so one part of it yeah i'm getting that it's more our generation that was kind of that happened to them a little bit too much or a little bit too rough that now we don't want to reflect that onto our children so the extreme is to not discipline them at all by force. Right. That that's that's <laughs> that's the point though. That's the problem. Was granted there were of course parents who and it's still this time, right? You could grow up in an abusive household, that's not cool. Obviously. I'm not saying, hey, everybody should be abused as children. Yeah, no, I'm I'm talking but, about like disciplining because of something bad or you not yeah, doing it correctly. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but we take those those cases where yes, that one hundred percent shouldn't be happening. We take it to the extreme, and then we just make the law that washes over everybody. Yeah. So now that sensible discipline of you know you disrespecting your mom or something like that, and you get a quick little slap across the face, problem solved. Can't do that. You know, cursing in front of your elders, you get your mouth washed out with soap. Yeah, God <laughs> forbid you do that today, right? That's jail time. So. It just goes into being soft. Real quick, we wanted to let you guys know that this episode is brought to you by Participation Awards. Did you do a bad job but want to feel like you're the best? Here's your Participation Award. Feeling bad about losing? Here's a Participation Award. Don't want to go home empty-handed? Here's your Participation Award. Yet you don't want to carry a big clunky trophy around for winning? Here's a Participation Award. Participation Awards. Don't buy one. You'll win one eventually. And if you don't win one eventually, feel free to email the people who really just don't care at goaway at youdidn'tdeserveit.com. Now back to the episode. We see people use this type of example with like our, our ancestors growing up into civilization today where before we had the stresses and anxieties of am I, get, am I going to get eaten by a bear today? Yeah. And then we no longer have those types of issues. So our brains still need something to feed off of. So now it's like, oh, crap, am I going to get fired? Am I going to make enough money? Like those are the same stresses to our our brain our physiology as am i going to get eaten by a bear today yeah because your brain needs something for that survival factor it needs to keep that it needs that negative attribute right because like you're saying yeah like when you look at it as a whole comparing not being eaten by a bear because you're living in a hut to you're not going to get fired but you have a stable life right now those are two drastically different levels of stress your body's going to be focusing on but it's still in that instinct that you need something bad to f focus on and worry about. Yeah, so as we move forward and continue to progress as a, as a society, we start solving these problems and our brains will start picking up on like these pettier issues. Being able to take that step back, focusing on what's actually important in your life, making the decisions on things that will actually make or break you, and just focusing on improving yourself is that solution to that entitlement. It'll help you be less offended because you realize that, oh yeah, the color blue is just a color. It's not going to hurt me. It's yeah. not going to kill me. Yeah. You know, it's not a bear in the woods. It doesn't pay my salary and provide the roof over my head. Maybe I can stop focusing so much on the color blue and, you know, focus on, I don't know, exercise, right? Doing something for myself. Yeah, because when you step aside and do all that, and even if you do look into stoicism on what we're talking about, you end up just having more control of your own life instead of just following that herd, instead of just being entitled to having your opinion heard by everybody because you don't like the color blue. Yeah. And I see how you mentioned about not being soft, not being so soft anymore. And this kind of goes into our second point. So do you want to go ahead and uh, lead us up on that? Yeah. So being soft, when we were talking about this before we started recording, it was a lot of focus that was put onto society that we have in America right now. And a lot of it's due to like the media outlets being so polarizing 
and including that herd mentality into this point as well, is that when you are trying to fit into those polarized left or rights, whichever one it is, you're you're being soft in a sense because you're not able to stand up for yourself. You're not sharpening your blade, which is a term that I wanted to bring up because when you sharpen your blade, it takes practice. It takes like you need to put it against, uh, what is it, like a whetstone? Yeah. Sharpen a knife or a sword. And being sharpened on that rock, it's like you need that uncomfortable feeling or lack of knowledge, but trying to achieve that knowledge in the end to then grow as a person, be a sharper tool to analyze both sides of a topic. So when, let's say, your left wing and then a right wing person comes to talk to you, if you have that sharpened blade, that practice and being comfortable in situations and stuff, you can have the knowledge to have that logical conversation that we talked about. You can have the knowledge of the right wing and the left wing and get your points across heard, standing up for yourself, being, well, not being soft. Whereas a majority of the time, if that right wing person comes to talk to you, they're not going to have a sharp uh, sword to argue with you. They're just going to be flattened when you bring out those points from both sides. Yeah, it's funny when you mention that. It makes me think of the videos where they go around and do their like the quick interviews with people. And they'll be like, hey, this is a quote from Trump or, hey, this is a quote from Biden. What do you think about it? And then they'll say the quote and then the person will be like, oh, well, you know, I disagree with that because blah, blah, blah. And this is stupid. And and the whole premise of the show is that the quote's actually from the other person. Or it's just taken out of context in general. Maybe it is something that they said. No, no, no. It's an actual YouTube series things where they do that. So then they let the guys or the girls go on and complain about it. And then they'll be like, oh, wait, sorry, that quote was actually from Biden, not from Trump. And then you'll see them be like, oh. And then they do the same thing going the other way where they're like, oh, no, that quote was from Trump, not Biden. And then you just see the look on people's faces and their brain just the cogs just abruptly stop Stop. moving, you know, because that is. That is kind of a callback to our Wednesday episode where we talked a lot about certain, um, I guess, certain ideas that we don't necessarily believe in, yeah. but they're things that we study and read up on because obviously there's a source out there for it. People do believe it. We want to open our minds and expand ourselves to different possibilities. Yeah, because... And it's also interesting. We wanted to talk about the topic, so we look into it, read a lot of crazy theories, and... It just helped us have more more ammo in our arsenal when we actually talked about it. That we can hit different theories that we didn't really agree with, but it's pretty cool to just talk about it. Going back to that YouTube series, I thought it was a. Uh, I thought you were saying like the media did that. No, no, no. But that's funny because, like you said, people they get to that abrupt stop because they don't have they don't want to accept that they were just talking bad about the person that they're siding with. Yeah, but I think when we do talk about media. I've been seeing it go to the extremes that now just our whole election, like this whole climate that we're in, it seems to go hand in hand with the Hunger Games series. Like the whole like <laughs> right. it's celebrity and like everything's about two presidents. Like it's it's about uh, which popular kid do you want in office? Not about like what did they do for the class. Right. You know? So I've been seeing like America get to this point that i feel like they're just i mean that america is becoming this strung out celebrity you know we have all the people in europe in central america and south america all over the world looking at america as this pivotal point for culture for for politics even but like that whole western culture affects worldwide so having so many eyes on america has led to us just getting to that breaking point you know like britney spears going crazy or yeah like that tipping we're, we're point. shaving our head right now yeah that's how i see america's <laughs> going about this just election year when you talk to the population they're so like they just want somebody centrist but the media is just portraying these two extreme lefts or right yeah it's really gonna make a lot of people feel uncomfortable too because your average person is more reasonable is more rational and the the media on either case really goes out there to put it like hey look you're either left or you're either right there's no in between or if you're in between they kind of put that as a with like a negative connotation right they'd be like oh well maybe you just don't know enough about what's going on and 
first of all, that's a big pet peeve of mine because with voting here as the example, right, obviously that's hot right now because, I mean, it's election time, right? Yes, sir. We're voting. It is your duty as an American citizen to go out there and vote. Word. But on the same note, you don't have to know everything about everything. If politics isn't your cup of tea, then don't go out there and study it. Don't go out there and focus on it because it's not for you. And that applies to everything. It's okay to not know something. So if somebody ever approaches you on a topic and they're like, well, what do you think about, I don't know, um, women inequality in the workplace? What do you think about racial inequality? What do you think about left or right politics? Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, I don't know a lot about this. And people are like, oh. How could you? You're right wing. You should know everything about that. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, well, you just ignore it because, you know, you're privileged or it doesn't affect you or something like that. And it's like, well, there's a lot of things that don't affect people. Personally, yeah. Personally, you know, it's it's okay. That's it. That's going to be my message for this <laughs> point. It's just going to be telling people it's okay. Yeah. I mean, but if you are going out to vote, you should know something of what you're voting on. It shouldn't just be like, just vote randomly. <laughs> no, because that's the point. If you aren't politically driven, you haven't researched on it, then don't go vote. It's okay. Damn! All right. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say here is that if you're saying it is your duty as an American to vote, yeah. which I agree with, I think you should, I mean, you should learn the basics. Who are the two people running for office? Right. Basic enough. Kind of fit with what do you want for this country? Do you want high taxes? Do you want, you know, just to keep going how it is? You like how everything's going? You don't have to go deep dive into each person's life and cast your vote on that. Yeah, but that's that's my point with I, I don't want to, you know, people, sh you, you can't force people to do anything. You can make people say, I guess, and then do something reluctantly, such as, hey, you need to vote, you need to vote, you need to vote. And you have zero political connotations to you. So you go out there and Christmas tree it, you know, I'd rather that person just not vote. Right. Whereas people who realize like, hey, yeah, it is my American duty to vote. Let's do some basic research real quick. Um, okay, I agree with this, this, and this point. So I'm going to see who agrees with those. Okay, you, boom. That's what I'm saying. Mark the box. I understand what you're saying. Now. Yeah. yeah. It's just that balance because, like I said, you can't force people to do anything. So, and that goes back to that entitlement, right? People should have your opinion on things. People should know this and that. And some people just really don't care. Even if it is a big issue, some people just really don't care. And that there shouldn't be a problem with that. They don't need to be included in solving that issue. And I say all that because it's been so heavy in the media where they're like, go out there and vote, go out there and vote, vote by mail, vote in person, write it in the sky. Like they don't care, right? They just want <laughs> you to get out there and go vote. Yeah. And that's what's been so kind of upsetting for me seeing that going on. Talking about writing it in the sky. I saw this post where I saw this person who got it tattooed on themselves on who they're voting for. Can you believe that? That's yeah. A, that's a little extreme. <laughs> So there's the extreme side of going um, super political, <laughs> but that's like you said, with with everything being so polarized right now, uh, media just really needs to chill out with that. And that kind of works both ways where media needs to chill out with forcing people to or trying to force people to do things because that's not the media's job, number one. Right. Um, and the other thing is people need to stop relying so heavily on the media. That's a big one. It's been a great improvement, though, over the last... I don't know, 10 years, I'd say, where the, the trust of media has started falling off as you see the sides divide more, mm -hmm. less and less people started paying attention to the media. Yeah. And, and to me, that's a great thing. But that's why I'm thinking it as America is just becoming that strung out celebrity because everybody's starting to see, oh, wait, there's flaws in this media system that we have going on. Yeah, there's flaws in, in everything we have going on. There's flaws everywhere. It's what burdens do you want to deal with? People just focus on the wrong topics a lot of times, you know, healthcare being the big one. Healthcare is too expensive. People can't afford it. So everybody should have insurance. Well, why don't we try lowering the price of medicine? Why do I have to go to the hospital and pay $40 for an Advil? That's why people can't afford it. Not because they don't have insurance. Hashtag big pharma. That's how the media will portray it to you. And then if you don't go out there and actually just look into it or even just think about it for a minute. You just sit there and mindlessly consume this information. You're going to get these really poor biases that don't have anything to stand off of. Yeah, you and back think to what that you said, that's yeah. a dull blade. Yeah, you think there's only that one path to 
like solve this problem when like you said if you even just think about it there's another side to finding that solution you know just lower the cost of the medicine and healthcare won't cost as much it sounds so simple so what uh what's your solution here to not being so soft but before we go into the solution here you said um how media just tells people like to vote and vote but what i've also been seeing is these people in power and already in politics telling you who to vote for i don't like that yeah, celebrities like, too. Yeah, celebrities are well, big. I'm voting one. for this person because my favorite celebrity said to. Yeah, come no, on, no, you're appealing for the wrong reason here, and it's not knowledge based. It's because you just like the celebrity, so you're gonna go vote for them. But something that we have written down here was like AOC, who would tell you to just vote for Biden just to get Trump out of office. Oh, that's true. Yeah, she did have that that Twitter post, right? Or the video. She was like, it doesn't matter if you like Biden or not. You have to focus on the point. Yeah, and the point being to take Trump out. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, there's no biases here. We're not telling you who to vote for. It's just... No, that's an actual video. Go look it up for yeah, yourself. Yeah, but what we're saying is you're telling us to vote for somebody, even if we don't agree with them, just to get this other person out of office. It's the next level of mindless media. That makes no sense to me. Like, why... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Next point. So the solution. <laughs> before before somebody gets offended here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the solution here, like I was stating earlier, is to sharpen that blade, like sharpen that weapon you have. And the weapon you have is your mind. You know, knowledge is key. Don't be a bigot. Admit when you're wrong or just flat out don't know something. Like in that case, I didn't want to keep going into that because I can see how it can spiral out of control. But to stop arguing and defending a situation or a person or a political party or a societal issue if you really don't know the facts go out there and if you really feel like it's something you want to base your life on or stand your ground on look into it a little bit more before you start antagonizing people to argue with you about it if you stand your ground on a lot of things eventually it's going to fall just like the roman empire right you have this massive land this massive covering you can't defend all of it so if you're a person that can actually just sit there and listen, sharpen that blade, listen to the other side, participate in some of what's going on on the other side to really understand both viewpoints of a situation, when you do come around to defending your viewpoints, people are going to take you a lot more seriously just because they're like, oh, wait, this guy's actually like, no, no, no he's being serious right now. He's standing his ground. And people will notice that in you. You'll get a lot more respect from that, a lot more a lot more drive and you'll have that sharp blade to try and make an impact on what you believe is right oh and you know what i just thought of when we were talking about being soft before i was listening to this podcast throughout the week and surprisingly enough there was this sponsored ad that they were doing and it was on this toothbrush right okay basic toothbrush but then it kept escalating this digital like connections to your phone that you get these rewards for brushing longer than two minutes <laughs> you're laughing already <laughs> you, you get like different like little chimes and stuff for brushing your teeth okay. and it made me like have to pause the video and really go wait people want to get rewards for brushing their teeth is that what it's come down to being that soft that you need a participation award for brushing your teeth so it was this was a real advertisement oh, the, on the podcast this was a 100 like, percent real advertisement that was paying them to sponsor it oh i don't okay. want to shout it out but yeah 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 no i get it but that concept of a participation award that everybody needs especially like kids that we mentioned earlier when you're in like sports you're not really grasping the value of winning or or losing at that point because you're not losing you're getting a medal at the end of the game so what's the point of even trying yeah you don't have to go hard in the paint if you're still going to get something for it right yeah, and you lack that strive for the win. You lack the feeling of losing, which most of the times help you overcome that and try even harder next time. So many great people, so many influential people in their realm, right, of whatever they do, are people who have come from really rough backgrounds or really hard times. Yeah. You know, like a couple off the top of my head, right, you have like uh, Robert Downey Jr. He was in prison. Yeah. 
you know heavy on the drugs as well yeah you got mike tyson yeah. grew up in the ghetto greatest Fought boxer everybody. in the yeah. world those struggles those diversities those things that people go through that's what makes you strong and that's why i i really kind of do believe in that sensible sl- slap across the face yeah. you know that sensible I mean? discipline yeah getting positive reinforcements all the time like oh here's your reward for brushing your teeth for two minutes yeah. what what is that man it really blew my mind when i heard it but it goes back to that whole entitlement thing because you're you feel like you're entitled to get that participation award yeah because you did something you should be doing every day sometimes things in life aren't about the reward it's about avoiding the punishment if you don't brush your teeth for a week because you're just being lazy people are going to notice people won't talk to you people will offer you a lot of mints Your teeth will start to turn colors that might be more offensive than the color blue. I was just about to say they could turn the color blue. Yeah, like that's that's the reward of brushing your teeth every day is avoiding that type of punishment. A lot of things in life are like that. And I think people need to realize that more. A really easy way for people to understand that sometimes the reward is just not getting the punishment. A lot of that disconnect has to do with our ease of access today. If you're uncomfortable, you go and click a couple buttons on the thermostat. If you're too hot, too cold, you fix that. If you're too hungry, all you have to do is open up the fridge and throw something in the microwave. Yeah, two okay. minutes and you're full. And I picked those two examples because a solution to realizing that the reward can be not getting the punishment is go out there, go camping for a weekend somewhere without a thermostat. But what if I don't like the bugs? Somewhere with, well, there's going to be, I mean, we're from Florida, <laughs> um, so I, I don't know much about other states. I've heard there are some states that don't have bugs, yeah. which is a mind-blowing concept to me. Um, and I also eat a lot of vinegar, so trust me, I know a lot about mosquitoes. They love me. Yeah. But go out there and go camping. Like I said, be somewhere that will make you uncomfortable until you have to do something to be comfortable. So sharpening your tool sharpening your knife it's like you want to eat tonight no problem you're gonna have to go get wood to make a fire you're gonna have to go hunt something you're gonna have to you know clean butcher get the meat all that stuff right you know talking about getting a rabbit or a squirrel or something and then you have to make the food that's not as easy as opening up your fridge throwing something in the microwave and in three minutes you're eating something yeah you know this is the process that's going to take you from three minutes to three hours just to be able to eat yeah. And back to that analogy, you were talking about our ancestors and that, that worry of having like a bear try to eat you. Yeah. But when you go camping, you realize this takes multiple hours just to get something to eat. Yeah. It's good to go primal sometimes. Just get back to it. And it's that, it's that reality. It's remembering what's actually real yeah. and what is just this made up issues that we have going on in our psychology today dealing with our you know quote unquote first world problems right yeah just disconnecting from media as well don't bring any electronics with you realize that what matters is what you just brought with you who you brought with you just having a good time instead of focusing on somebody who states away or what this guy did in california you know doesn't matter what matters is like what's immediately around you it's good to reground yourself just going out and being like primal, like you said, I think of this really tough, bad mama jama, mm-hmm. right? Chevy. <laughs> His name is Dan Crenshaw. And you wrote down this quote for him, but I wanted to make sure we brought that up in this podcast. Yeah. He said, uh, don't be offended, but more importantly, try not to offend. Well, let's go into that for a little bit. All right. The main point here when he talked about it was, you know, obviously he is a politician um very very republican and he got kind of some hate from his book right he has a a book that came out called fortitude Um, he's also a vet right he's a veteran yep combat veteran he was in the shit you know a pretty tough guy yeah so you don't get more primal than than that right but he got a lot of a lot of pushback from his book because it's the same thing where you almost get rewarded for offending people that have different beliefs than you like To some people, it's funny, or it's this joke, and really, you're just being a douche. And his point was like, 
look, you know, Republicans want to say, you know, Democrats are snowflakes. You get offended by things easily. You need safe spaces, all this stuff. And then he's like, but look at Republicans, you know, tell them, tell them to wear a mask before they go into a grocery store. Watch the reaction you're going to get. It's the same childlike play you're going to get when you're talking about somebody who needs a safe space because a guy sat with his legs too far open. Yeah. So his point was, you know, of course, don't don't be offended. Try not to be offended by like all these little petty things out there. But more importantly, you need to don't keep be that res- there to offend. Yeah, you need yeah. to keep that respect. You know, there's really no reward for going out there and making somebody's day worse just because they don't believe in the same things you believe. But I think you can inadvertently skip that whole problem if you just focus on understanding both sides of every situation, like we mentioned earlier. With stoicism. Being sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And when we do mention stoicism, I think we mentioned it in that episode that we took out. But just to recap, it's not a religion. Like you said, it was a philosophy. Look into it, you know? It's just a way of thought. Go with a different way of thinking. Look into it. Maybe it has some values that hit home with you. Start setting up those uh, values that you want to keep in your day-to-day life and help you reflect on yourself and being that better person, getting away from that herd mentality, being less entitled, having solid points, having that knowledge both sides of the argument, sharpening your blade, keeping that heavy arsenal. Because at the end of the day, the entitlement aspect is something you fix within yourself. But the respect aspect is what you have to focus on projecting onto others. And to take us out here, I wanted to grab this quote from a Greek Stoic philosopher, Epictetus. The quote goes, any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. And I feel like that really summarizes what this episode was about but with that being said i want to thank everybody for listening remember to like and share this video and if you get the chance please follow us on facebook at the motivating force our instagram at podcast tmf feel free to subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't done so already and remember to hit that bell icon our bonus episodes slash segments that we do come out every wednesday at 8 a.m and the weekly drives are going to continue coming out on mondays 8 a.m. EST. Now go on get.